If you're using a computer live on stage, it's important to make sure you can stay engaged throughout the performance and not look like you're checking your email while on stage. Hey, I'm Will Doggett, Ableton Live Certified Trainer, founder of From Studio Stage, and today I'm gonna show you how you can connect a MIDI controller to use with Ableton Live so that you don't look like you're checking your email on stage. Let's get started. All right, so it doesn't matter what type of MIDI controller you have, whether it's a foot controller, drum pad, keyboard like this, I'm gonna take you through the basic settings to make this happen. First thing we have to talk about is how to connect it to our computer. So if your, co your controller has USB, the easiest thing is to just plug a USB cable right into your computer. That's probably the best way to do this. That's gonna power your controller. Unless you need extra power, then you can use a power supply. The other thing you can do is use a five pin MIDI cable like this. If your controller has five pin MIDI and your audio interface has five pin MIDI. The other thing you could do is add something like the iConnect MIDI 2 Plus into your setup so you can plug five pin into this directly into your machine uh, without having to buy a new audio interface, which is great. So once we get our controller connected, let's head into Live's preferences to make a few changes. So to get into preferences, I'm gonna do command comma, and then I wanna to go to the link MIDI tab to talk through a few settings. The first thing I wanna talk about here is the control surface setup. If you have a controller that includes a control surface script in Ableton Live, you can pull that up and automatically your controller is gonna be mapped to things in Live. So I could go into here and grab just one of these MPK settings, MPK 61, and that's my controller. Now the next thing I need to do is tell Live what the input of that controller is. So I'm gonna choose Akai MPK61 port one, and then output is port one. So now that we've set the input and output, I can go back into live, move fader three, and you'll see that fader moves automatically. Move fader four, and that moves automatically. Now, I have to admit though, I'm not a huge fan of using control surface uh, in live. I wanna make sure that I can map stuff exactly the way I want to, and that I don't accidentally hit something and it changes something without me knowing it. So I'm gonna go back into live's preferences and disable the control surface. So I wanna just use this as a default uh, MIDI controller and make my own mapping. So a couple things I need to be aware of with that. So let's go down to the MIDI port section for just a moment. Moment. We can deal with the input and the output of our controller. Let's start with input. So what this means is um, how is live going to translate data that comes from your MIDI controller? What is it going to do with it? If I want to use this MIDI controller to send MIDI to live's tracks. So the way I think about this is if you're in a studio and you're recording or you're tracking, right? You're playing guitar part. If I want to be able to play and I want that to come out of one of Live's MIDI tracks as an instrument, uh, then I wanna make sure track is enabled. So right here's my input, I go to track and I enable that. Now, if I want Live to sync to my MIDI controller, if your controller has the ability to change tempo, maybe turn a knob and change tempo, and you want Live to correspond with that, then I would enable sync on that Live setting. So if I want to press play on my MIDI controller and have it automatically start Ableton Live, that's when I'm gonna enable remote. And again, the best way to think of that is you're remotely controlling Live from your MIDI controller. Now that we've talked about our inputs, let's talk about our outputs. And again, output means how does your MIDI controller translate MIDI that Ableton is sending it. So if I go to output and enable track here, that's gonna allow Live's MIDI tracks to send uh, MIDI to my controller. So this could allow me to uh, pull up program changes on my controller. It could allow me to send MIDI notes to an external synthesizer if that's connected via MIDI. Lots and lots of possibilities. If I have maybe a guitar pedal, like a time factor or timeline, and I wanna sync the delays up, or a Nord, and I wanna sync my uh, tremolos and my ARPs up with Ableton Live, I wanna make sure I enable sync, and that's gonna send MIDI clock and tempo information or arrangement information to that pedal uh, or to our keyboard so that it's perfectly in sync in a time, which is very, very cool to do. And then finally, if I wanna send control changes or changes over time, like when I move this fader in live, it's gonna control control the volume CC7 of my Nord, then I wanna make sure that remote is on. So go back through, take a look at those settings and decide what do you wanna do uh, with the input and output. And again, remember input means how does live translate data coming from your keyboard, and output means how does your keyboard or controller translate data coming from Ableton Live. Now one final thing I wanna talk about that's really important before we move on. If your controller has faders like this one does, then it's really important to take note of takeover mode. Now and what takeover mode does is it defines how does live interact with something that has faders. Right now it's set to none. And let me show you what that does. I'm gonna go in and quickly MIDI map uh, fader one to this fader on uh, the track. And I'll show you how I do that in a moment. Now watch what happens when I move this fader, 
Live automatically jumps to the value of that. Now that's not great if that's a pad sound that I'm playing. It's an ambient pad sound and I suddenly wanna just bring the volume down slightly. It's gonna jump from here to here. So live is gonna automatically match that. We probably don't want that. Now the next setting we could go to is called pickup. And the way this works is let me bring live's fader up here. Let me bring my fader down. And you'll notice this yellow message, and if I move my, my mouse down here, it says track volume is awaiting pickup. And what that means is live is gonna wait till this fader on my controller matches live's fader, and then it's going to pick up and continue to move. Now that's gonna uh, alleviate those abrupt jumps, but it's kind of awkward when you're playing and you've gotta move the fader till everything catches. If you are using that, what I suggest is before you start, move all your faders so that they get in sync, and then mix your levels on your controller. If you do that, you're probably gonna be good. But the setting that I like when we talk about takeover mode is the final one, which is called value scaling. And the way that works is it's basically gonna uh, do this. Let me show you what it does. So let's move um, our fader on our controller to about halfway. Let's move live's fader all the way up. So live, we have this much room. On our fader here on our keyboard, we have about half as much room there. So what we can do is as I move this fader, live is gonna say, okay, he moved, he's got this much, he moved this percentage, and it's gonna apply that percentage that your controller made to Ableton Live's fader and bring it down. So you can see when I touch the fader, it doesn't drastically jump. It's just slowly, smoothly moving, and then once the values pick up, then it's in sync. So what's cool about this is if I want just a little more, it doesn't matter where this fader is, I just bump it up and it's gonna give me a little bit more. And then as soon as I just keep moving, it's perfectly in sync. So I would highly suggest when using takeover mode that you have it set to value scaling if you're using fader. So now that we have our MIDI preferences set, let's actually map a few things. Now what I'm gonna do is go up here to the MIDI button or I could do Command M. That's gonna allow me to map a setting on my controller to something in live. You can see previous I mapped that fader. Let me show you how I did that. So anything in purple on the screen can be mapped to my controller. All I have to do is click it and then move what I want to map it to. Super easy. So I click the fader, I move the fader on my controller. And you can see there's a value that's set there automatically. So let's go here and do the same thing. Now when I get out of there, just press Command M to exit, I can move those faders and they're perfectly ready to go. Now a few things you may wanna know is if I open what used to be Live's browser in mini map mode, now I get my mappings browser. And what you see is, okay, I mapped CC12 to uh, track three mixer track volume. Same thing for four. Now two values that you have here that I wanna mention is both the minimum and maximum value. Now if you've got this set for live performance and you can't exceed zero or nominal, then you wanna make sure in the max box that you hit zero. And let's do the same thing for this one and I'll show you what that does. Let's exit mini map mode. Now no matter how high up I push that fader, you're gonna notice the track stops at zero. And I bring it down, it's gonna go all the way down. The other thing you could do is you could invert your uh, values so you can make it so that when I bring fader one down, it's gonna go up, and when I bring it up, it's gonna go down. So as I go down, it goes up, and as I go up, it goes down. So that could allow you to create some really unique, cool things. Now finally, I get this question all the time. Um, let's say I wanna control four track volumes in live, so let's create two more tracks here. Um, I wanna control those all with one fader. People ask me all the time, how can I make it so that one thing on my MIDI controller controls multiple things in Ableton Live? Super easy to do, let me show you how. I'm gonna enter MIDI map mode again, and I'm gonna delete my mappings that I made earlier just to make sure we're good to go. I'm gonna select this fader and map it here. Select the next fader and use the same control that I did and move that and it's mapped to the same fader. Same thing again and then finally, same thing again here. Now again, just like we talked about before, I'm gonna set all of these to zero just so that they uh, won't max out at six but max out at zero. And then again, as I move this one, you'll see all of those faders move at once, which is really, really cool. Now, the other thing to be aware of is be aware of what MIDI channel your controller is sending. So if I go back into MIDI map mode, you'll see all of this is on channel one. 
what I could do is use this same uh, bank of faders, and if I control, uh, you know, say I press that and that changes to a different uh, MIDI channel, then I can map this fader map to MIDI channel two and do a completely different set of mappings, which is very, very cool. In that situation, just be careful that you know you're always on the right bank and haven't accidentally gone to another bank. So to learn how to do even more with your MIDI controller and able to live on stage, head to from studio to stage com where you can start a free seven day trial to get access to everything that we have you get access to every single course in the library from one price you get access to the private community of like-minded performers trying to figure out how to use ableton live on stage and finally you get a monthly call with just the subscribers where i'll answer any questions you guys have and show you what i am working on with ableton live it's a great great way to learn how to use ableton live on stage so we'd love to see you there but thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope to see you next time. Take care. Bye.